What is going on, Nerd Paraders? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for coming to hang here with me today as we talk about Icarus Survival. So Icarus has just hit release. It is now out of its beta status. We did play a lot on the beta weekends when Icarus was available for beta playing. And now that it's fully out, we've been streaming it. And there are a lot of questions that come in those streams about what Icarus is, so I'm here to talk about it today. Before I jump into it, introductions are in order. I am Nick, this is Nerd Freight, and welcome once again to the channel. So as I mentioned, if you haven't seen us live on the twitch.tv slash nerdparade streaming some of the Icarus things, uh, I'm here to talk to you about it now, but head over there, drop a follow, and catch me when I go live. Icarus, the number one question that I've gotten is, what is different about Icarus? when it comes to other survival games. Or I've heard some weird things about Icarus and I don't know if I'm gonna like it. So here I'm gonna help you make your decision about the game by educating you on it. And the way I would describe Icarus is a roguelike survival game. Roguelike experience survival game. So what that means is when you're playing the game, you have these missions, AKA prospects. We'll click on a prospect here and these individual missions, you would click on these, Welcome complete back. these, and you would earn some kind of monetary reward. Space money buck credit dollars, basically. So once you've got your space money buck credit dollars for completing a mission, you would head over here into the workshop, and then you would spend those credits unlocking something from the tier. And once you've researched it, you've unlocked it, then you can spend extra money to buy it, and it'll come with you on your journey. So whenever you start a mission or a new prospect, you always start naked, fully like you start with nothing. So it's not like your traditional survivor game where you start with nothing and you build up to the top. In Icarus, you start with nothing and you build up to the point where you can complete your mission and then you advance to the harder missions. Eventually you'll be getting to the point like way down here where you're gonna be building extensively just to complete the mission but in the beginning you're not going to be quite there yet if that doesn't resonate with you and if you prefer the traditional survivor game feel like uh, arc survival evolved or atlas or valheim or something where you start from the bottom and build your way all the way to the top igris does give you the option to still play with their system and do that in a outpost uh map and this has no mission timer which the prospects do come with mission timer so you have like seven days to complete it, and they do count down while you're offline and not playing. So you have seven days to start and complete it, and you can do it with friends or totally solo. We'll get into that in a little bit. But if you want to just play kind of like sandbox, outpost is your game mode. Join prospect is when you want to join a friend, and then new prospect obviously is what you saw we were working with. So to take this a bit further, you can specialize your character with talents. And each of these talents do various different things. Really comb over this, make sure you pay close attention to it, but it's things like increase your maximum health, move speed as you saw, increase maximum stamina. There's things that can make you more efficient in combat if you click up here to the combat. And in construction, you could do things like reduce the cost of building. Entirely, if you build out of wood structures, you get a discount. If you wanna build out of stone structures, you can get a discount. So really comb through this and figure out what you wanna specialize your character into because these points are finite and you will not be able to spec into a lot. So it has to be something kind of laser focused. If you're a solo player, meaning you don't ever plan to play this game with any of your friends, you can spec into the solo tree, which has a lot of the really good stuff from these other three trees combined into one. Only caveat is this right here. It only functions when you're playing solo. And if you invest points into this and you decide at some point you wanna play with your friends, all of your invested talent points are nullified. You do not get to benefit from them. So what I would suggest if you plan on playing solo, make a specific character that is solo only, and then you can put points into this. Otherwise, make a character, you can have up to three characters, make a character that's for multiplayer and specialize in only these three trees because it will not apply. That's a big, big, big thing. And it took me a little while to learn that. I accidentally specced into some of the solo stuff thinking like, oh, I'm solo, I'll just join a party or a tribe with someone and I'll still be able to benefit. No, it doesn't work like that. Next, continue our explanation, we have the tech tree. Now, let me tell you that I probably spent about two hours thinking about how I could min-max my character 
and learn all the things in tier four and circumvent a lot of the things in tier one. And that is just not the mentality to have. Let me warn you right now. Since you begin every single mission from the absolute bottom, you're going to want to spend the majority of your points in the beginning of the game here in tier one. This is the absolute pick up from the ground and craft the stuff tier. And you can learn wood or thatch. I wouldn't do both. Don't, in fact, don't do both. Thatch is very weak and ultimately considered scaffolding. And I would not specialize into that at all personally. I wait until level five and then I specialize into wood to save points. You can do both if you want. Like if you're making a character specifically just to like power level other players so that you, you join in with them. I mean, you could use that as an option, but I don't see a lot of viability with it. I personally go into wood because it's just stronger than thatch. To further expand on it, you're going to want at least the base tier tools of every, every section. So I personally skip out on wood spear and just go for bow because I don't have any desire to really go into bone spear. I go straight for the bow, learn a couple of the arrows. I get the repair hammer and then you can get the upgrade tool. Currently at the time of playing the upgrade tool functions very weirdly i can't actually get it to work uh but it might might just be a bug it could be fixed by the time you're watching this video the purpose of this tool is to upgrade a tier say you build out of thatch and you want to upgrade it to wood you have to have both things learned but you can do that with the upgrade tool that's the purpose behind that definitely learn yourself a torch night is extremely dark and extremely punishing you will have no idea where you're going learn the torch get the fire whacker don't skip on this. If, you're, if your base gets struck by lightning or something and fire starts, you're going to need to put it out. Learn it. Trust me. Like, Don't skimp on a lot of this stuff. The things that you're going to be skimping on and specializing your character on is going to happen later in Tier 3 and Tier 4. But in Tier 1, you want most of the stuff because it's super easy to craft and it helps you out in the long run. Like the antibiotic paste and the blood thinning paste. This stuff doesn't completely cure your debuffs but it does reduce them pretty significantly for like practically nothing. Sticks, lily, and charcoal is just nothing. Splint in case you fall off something high and break your ankle. Uh, rope is a little annoying. To craft rope effectively, you would need to be in here to tier two with a crafting bench, but it's still like one of the best ways to quickly heal a, qu quickly and cheaply heal a broken leg. Suture kits are nice for the bleeding, so on and so forth. Don't, don't worry about, uh, spending too many points in here. For cloth armor, this is something that only gives very minor bonuses. If one person in your crew learns it, feel free to skip over this. You can specialize in some armor later. I personally skipped over it because another one of my crew learned it. Wood crate, you could have the extended storage in this one if you want to invest another point. I just did the small one, saved myself a point, but definitely get the oxidizer. Rope I skipped because this requires a talent point investment. You can turn leather into rope, like a rawhide rope. But at level 10, when you get the crafting bench, you can just turn straight up fiber into rope. So I skipped over that completely in order to save a point. Hopefully that helps you. Currently at the time of recording, this water bomb is not in the game. It does require a talent, and I think it's going to be for dousing fires. Like, think a water balloon. Something gets caught on fire. That's what I think, but at the current time, it's coming soon. It's not in game. And then again, these sticks, it's a talent. You have to waste a talent point to do this. It's converting a piece of wood into sticks. I skipped it. I don't want to waste my talent points into that when I can just chop down a tree and get wood that way or pick up sticks and get sticks that way. To me, it was not worth the overall investment. Now branching in here to 10, tier two, when you get at level 10, you unlock this at level 10. Personally, I stop at Iron Axe. Uh, and I don't go into steel. Like, I save the points because you're going to go here into tier 3 and then you're going to have platinum. The benefit at the current state of the game from iron to steel is very, very low. So, 50% fell, or plus 50 felling damage to trees, plus 125% yield. The steel, on the other hand, bumps it up by a whopping 5%. You do a little bit more melee damage, but for the point investment, it doesn't seem that lucrative to me so i make the upgrade from stone stone tools to iron tools and i stop you're gonna want the furnace you gotta smelt stuff 
Uh, Rain Res Reservoir is really, really nice because there's not bodies of water that you can drink out of everywhere on the map. And if you're not careful, you can get parasites from drinking out of bodies of water. So the Rain Reservoir really, really helps. But if it doesn't storm, you don't get any rain, you could thirst to death. These are all kind of problems. It's all about that survival, though. It's a survival game, after all. Oxide Dissolver is another way to help you get oxygen and maintain your oxygen. And then the fireplace is a much better place to cook. Now, you can get this. I personally do grab it because it cooks so quickly. Or you can just dedicate yourself here to the fire pit. The fire pit is kind of like an in-between between the campfire and then the, the fireplace. I honestly tend to get both because the campfire I use for various things, including starting forest fires. But back into tier two, if you want to do farming, crop plot is a good investment. Don't be too shy about going ham in tier one and tier two. It's There's just a lot of benefit there. You're going to have to pick and choose some armors that you specialize in. And then you've got to choose once more between stone and interior wood. This one to me is a no-brainer. Go stone. Because this one actually is immune to fire stone structures are immune to fire that's huge whereas interior wood is mostly designed to just look pretty and be used internally inside your base it even says in the tooltip best used internally making sure that i save some points for tier three which gets even more specialized you can start making guns at the machining table you can make some cool hunter armor and then you could advance into aluminum and concrete concrete is insanely tough and it's really good against weather. Whereas aluminum could be useful later on because it offers a wind resistance buff. I haven't seen this on anything else, but plus 50% wind resistance could be useful on some prospects if there's heavy wind damage. So it may be you can only build your bases out of aluminum if you want them to survive. So with these two, have a member of your crew go aluminum, have another member of your crew go concrete. Like say if you go into the tundra where it's frozen, you're gonna want that extra insula insulation for sure. So if you're working together, try to try to do that. And as we advance in here into tier four, a lot of this stuff isn't quite into the game yet where we got like water pumps and piping, uh, water wheel for power generation. We've got solar panels and things of that nature. This stuff isn't into the game yet. And currently, Max level is 40, and that might be increased. So don't worry if you can't get all the crazy stuff at tier 4, because most of it isn't really viable or in-game yet. However, if you'd like to get things like the combat knife, which could be extremely useful, plus 70, 175 yield from skinning, over the titanium, which is 225, the absolute like best craftable skinning thing you can get, these are all the places where you're going to make the absolute best tools, but you got to be in the game for a while before you get here. And if you're not playing in the later prospects where you're eventually building all the way up to tier four to do everything that you need, I feel like this stuff is going to be used infrequently unless you're in sandbox. So take that for what you will. Also, if we go over here to the workshop, some of this stuff is comparable to the things that you can actually just straight up buy and start your mission with. So with this being the option, that's why I'm so adamant when I say that you don't need to really worry too terribly much about the equipment stage in tier three and tier four, whereas tier one and tier two are going to help you get your feet off the ground in the beginning if you don't want to spend the money to start the map with one of these tools. So the titanium was 225 yield from skinning. This one that you can start the game with after spending 300 to unlock it and 100 to buy it to start the game, minus 25 percent from skinning that's really not that much so since we've gone over the tech tree we've talked about the talents and we've talked about the roguelike elements of icarus i hope this d goes pretty far in explaining like what this game actually is and again to answer the question like what's how is this survival game different than any of the survival games that i played before which was probably the number one question that i got when i was streaming and i figured this dedicated video would be the best possible way to answer it so let me know in the comments below if this kind of explained the game for you, the system of the game, and let me know what, uh, what you think of Icarus so far as well. I'm excited to hear your opinion. Subscribe here to the channel so you don't miss any videos coming your way, and look forward to the 
Icarus playthrough series that we're going to do here for you right on the tubes of Ubes coming every single Monday. And uh, if that's not enough for you, if that's not enough Nerd Parade for you, you can, always, again, always catch me live on twitch.tv slash Nerd Parade. So until the next video or until the next stream, guys, I hope this video helped. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that YouTube-y stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.